I'll read it in going. The evolution of the native dark skinned woman. It evolved from long, strong, and powerful to kinky, coily, tight curls. Some people have looser curls, but it seems that a lot of women do not want to manage their hair. The reason that black women like or prefer long straight wavy hair is because the deeply embedded roots just like we see on the right where our synchronized photos that we um, found as you see you see a, a native dark skinned man to the top right with long straight hair to the left of him, we see a dark-skinned young girl. That's with a boy. A uh, dark-skinned boy. Oh, uh, exactly. You couldn't even tell the, the you tell them apart kind of because the boys wore pants, the girls wore dresses. Exactly. So then that's the thing now, and just like you see a lot of um, young men these days, a lot of yeah, they have longer hair, and they mothers and what whatnot like to have them embrace their long hair, and a lot of fathers don't necessarily like their sons or prefer their sons rather to embrace longer hair in different settings or for different certain situations or I guess it just varies from person to person but overall most men like to see their son with a nice cut hair or looking presentable and if they is gonna have some hair they're gonna make sure it's maintained like you see with the young um, native dark skinned boy to the top but as time progressed we see the African Native Americans we still had those um, Native American roots embedded from um, our ancestors only from the cultural perspective not from the visual perspective any, um, anymore so just like you see on the bottom the, the two boys look like they can be any two uh, black boys, black kids, black sons, black grandsons that's walk around doing all this shit that we got, got going on today. And the two women look like they can be fit for a variety of different people's grandmothers and different settings with the um, hair, the facial structure, or even the the physical appearance of their um, body. The thing that kept you pure as a Native American was the hair. So if you were a Native American woman and have a baby by African, the baby would not have that strong, powerful hair no more. It would be a looser curl pattern if you're lucky. But for the most part, you, it, it would get you the hair texture of, of any black person here today. In the first picture, you see Christina Jenkins. She was the person who created the sew-in in America, which was um, a lifesaver for most black women back then because it gave them the opportunity to Integrate. To integrate and look more civilized to the to the white people. They or want to society. To society, for, but they obviously were doing it for us to accept, be accepted by a specific race. Exactly. The women start perming their kids' hair to fit in when this was not mandatory. It was just to prevent bullying and harassment, but still went on, whether the hair was straight or nappy. But it's still something that calls and affects people hair of today because whatever you're doing to your hair believe it or not that is being embedded into your DNA some way or somehow to be passed down because the perm is not obviously natural so when Christina created the sewing it was easier and better for women to manage their hair they were able to flat iron just the little pieces that they left out, they were able to put it in 
numerous of styles that we still see today, but it seems like it's been passed up by the frontals now. Hey, we can read it right there. White girls are pretending to be women of color on Instagram. Um, so I see that the picture on the left is a lighter hue woman. And on the second picture, it looks like she's the same person with wavier hair, darker tone. Um, it looks like she got some contour going on to make her lips look fuller, higher cheekbones, even though she's smiling in the first picture, but she's not spot smiling in the second picture. As you can still see, it's kind of like a element of her trying to be a person of melanin and color. I don't know if I'm supposed to react to it, but I feel like it's just a showing that everyone wants to be the opposite of who they really are or who you appear to be. People are finding it harder and harder to embrace the body they were born with and they're willing to alter it and do whatever to look other any way other than the way they were born. A native dark-skinned woman recreated what black woman once had and still to this day, we have lighter skin uh, white women continue to imitate what black, what black women don't actually know was once theirs. That's the whole gist, um, gist of it, is we have to recreate ourselves. And we are that smart where we can recreate who we once were but not even know why are we recreating this product to look a certain way because it's already deeply in embedded in us, in our ancestors, that this is where we come from. So we smart enough. If you even take the hair from our head, we will be able to recreate it in a synthetic form to give us that same visual appearance that we once had before we were colonized. The more I look at the picture, it just looked like an evolved black face. And it's like shame on us for not knowing who you is. That's it. Not and not shame. standing on. I mean, you know, not standing on you. They just don't know who they are. That's what. That's what make them call us ignorant. Then. That's what. Scripture down there, really. It says a side by side representation of a native white woman and a native black woman. They both look natural. As you can see, this is what everybody wants their lace fronts to look like. They want to melt it to the scalp so that you can have the illusion that this is really coming out of your hair. It gives you the confidence that it's really coming out of your hair. You have everything in one. This is what we once looked at like on the left, uh, were our women. And this is why um, the one on the black woman on the right, can it can appear to be so and look so authentic and natural, even though we know now that this is what they're doing. But we now we understand, or better yet, that now we overstand the deeply embedded route to do this such thing or to look this certain way because they once didn't have that um, type of hair. And this woman, I'm not saying the white woman didn't, but she is a, of a white woman descent of the Native American. And the one on the right is of a dumb, what we call black descent of the Native American woman. So they're both two are the same, but even the lesser form of the Native American woman, which is the white woman, kept those some of those roots, which is which is some of the looks and appearance, but the black woman, we lost those. They lost those, but what they didn't lose is the wisdom and the know-how to overcome and to be able to weather the storm, regardless if they look like that or not. They still, we still was able to maintain and um, transform the um, the hair that they did have, which was um, the curly coarse hair around the 60s and the 70s when black women were embracing that and making that a norm with the froze and all that stuff or natural curls yes, and different stuff like, like that. It was yeah. definitely the disco era, era that made black women embrace their natural hair because they seen 
how much spray and hair products these white people had to put in their hair just to put get an afro or to get their hair to hold curls and we have evolved to love and embrace these natural looks but it costs so much money because it's being taxed because they know who they're selling this hair to they know their um main audience is african-american women and the reason they're charging so much for this hair is because they know that this hair is really yours so it's it's the same thing if somebody robs somebody for some drugs and the, they make that person buy it back they're going to make them buy it back for more than what it's worth so you're buying your hair back and plus tax How long was the Native Americans at war? This is a sidebar, but a still a very important um, side note or piece of information. This is just a clip from a sidebar from something that we researched where they said, I take issue with the characterization that the war in Afghanistan Af Afghanistan is America's longest war. America's real longest war was the conflict against um, indigenous Americans called the American Indian Wars, which most historians characterize as beginning in 1609 and ending in 1924 or 313 years mainly over the United States but they tell us in history that we were enslaved for 400 years that's another thing but what, what we get into is the 313 years that the Native Americans were fighting they all had women they all were procreating they all were a part of this same cycle that they said was just nothing but slavery here. And simply, <clears throat> at the bottom we see a few generations of being kidnapped, enslaved, and impregnated with other cultures, and we see our very own genetics being affected We, as we started to inherit other races' looks and characteris um, characteris yeah, characteristics. The native women befriended the Anglos too hastily. What I mean by that is, as we see on the screen share to the right, is we had native women saving white colonists or Anglo colonists when they came over here because these were the same men that befriended them and gave them gifts. So basically, the, the Anglos that came over here were the first high value man and I stand on that. The colonists came over here and they were the first high value men over um, these women own fathers and their own brothers that they once grew up with only because of the things that they came over here with, um, with which was just mainly physical possessions. Um. I chose to add this picture on the left because it shows that obviously it's a slave number 929, probably out of a thousand slaves. Um, but if you look at her hair, you can see where she come from. You can see where she come from. You can see the coarseness in her hair, where it's a little different from the original Native Americans. But you can tell that she is an offspring from them. Na by nature, they were not capturing slaves with this type of hair from Africa. But you can see the structure in her high cheekbones, her nose, her demeanor. You, you see that in a lot of African American women today. You just don't see the same hair anymore. Exactly. So you should really be able to, it's like you you refuse to think that you come from somewhere just because of your hair you, no because of how you look so you if you don't look like you come from somewhere how can you know you don't you don't know you come from it that's a, it's easy yeah exactly if you don't what they say if you can't beat them join them all right as 
you see in this caption, another Native black woman with long silky hair and the other three Native American women have the same hair and the left resembles a woman on the right. Meaning that the hair is the same. And the woman is the same. The wo Meaning the hair is the same and the woman is the same is as if they know where they come from. They Without just don't, knowing. Exactly. So that's why I, look, I go back to it. It just looks natural. And this is why I just and we just had the futuristic form of how they um, how their hair looked it back then without all the extra um, baby hair modifications, the ponytails and all the slick edges and the flat irons and all the extra cosmetics that you we can apply to our hair. We we just have the upgraded version of what they had what we once had back then. And as you see we have a on the right picture, to the far left of the right picture, we have a um, dark-skinned Native woman. In the middle is a kind of a lighter-skinned um, Native woman. And on the far right of the right picture, we have another um, fairly light-skinned Native woman. In which we know in today's time that our women come in all shades uh, and sizes. Further down the generations, you see our native black women hair starts to shrink and shrivel and become more unmanageable and less maintained. And this is because you are stripped from the resources that gave you that strength in the first place. You don't know what you're supposed to put in your hair because you're not in your natural element anymore. So it's no longer relevant to your life purpose anymore because now you have to find other ways to fit into society that's convenient. And back then, it was going to be harder for women to strip up these natural resources versus buying a perm. And as you can see, the two Anglo women, we will say, their hair started to be more um, blacker, fuller, and longer. And they had to do less to maintain that length of hair. Because they were the only race that was losing their hair by 30. The women would start losing their hair by 30 and the men would start going gray by 30. But that was the only race that had that problem. They wanted to become us, literally. This is the face of black women in modern society because we forgot where we come from. You can now understand except why you like wearing long wavy hair embrace who we are so it's not what you do it's how you do it exactly so as long as you know where you come from when you wear that hair you won't give a fuck about what nobody say about you wearing it because at the end of the day y'all say it's y'all shit anyway because y'all bought it so own it like that because you know you bought it from your ancestors exactly not literally but you're, you know that this is this is the hair that comes from you Exactly, this is what they died for. Exactly, they say, we doing all this for, you know why we ain't doing nothing for black people? Because we don't actually know what the slaves died for. Because it, if y'all look to the far right top corner, that woman looks like a black woman of today. And her hair is still, her hair is still long, still showing length and strength. A lot of people wish they had this hair today. <laughs> the eyes that seek shall not be misled. From Tadante Energy. This quote is empowerment because you should not let what you see deceive you. You should not always trust what you see because people are portraying to be exactly what they want you to see. So you should always seek the truth beyond your eyes and seek with your ears. See with your ears. In order for you to know who you are, you must first realize where you are. If you feel like you're running in a circle, it's because 
you don't know who you are unless you just want to be a circle and see this that then you just repeat the same things over and over and don't expect different results but if you keep doing the same thing and expect different results then it drives you insane so you need to embrace where you come from and don't believe what you're told because you to were told it we all been told we were black and we were African for, from Africa without real evidence, without real research. Exactly. We all just went with it. Yeah, basically just because he was our skin. He was like, shit, dark enough, I might as well be black. Because you're yeah, yeah, from Africa. This is, th this is the darkest thing I know. Or y'all thought only the only dark skinned people was from Africa. That's the sad part. That's the ignorant part that black people did not originate from Africa. Yeah, there's dark skinned people in every continent, every country, and every crevice is dark, or darker skinned. You're telling people. me people in. Look, just think of um, Brazil. South America is filled with people that are darker because the hotter it is you cannot stop that you cannot control how much sun you get in certain countries and africa is not the i don't think africa is the hottest con continent we would like to thank you for listening to this video we are still working on how to articulate the rundown of what's valuable to you guys to get you to easily understand where you come from so just make sure you guys follow us with a grain of salt if you have to rewatch this video to comprehend everything we said make sure y'all share the video even if you didn't like the video please share the video our IG is health wealth and sex this podcast was a nice topic and it would probably be uncomfortable for some people to realize where they come from. But the conversation has to start somewhere. So if you think otherwise, make sure you give your comments in the comment section about why you think you're really from Africa. Appreciate it. Zealous truth and guidance. It's been real. It's your boy Tadante. And we out.